Thank you for listening to today's Veterans Christian Fellowship Devotional Bible Study. Warning of the reality of hell and the only way to be saved from it. Please click the link in the description to read along, and be sure to look up and study the reference scriptures throughout. Our scripture reading today begins in Luke chapter 16. I'll be reading verses 19 through 31 in the New International Version. Jesus is speaking. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been set in place, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. He answered, Then I beg you, Father, Send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abraham, he said. But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. The scriptures make it crystal clear that hell is a very real place described as a hell of fire, eternal fire, a fiery furnace, unquenchable fire, and outer darkness. The Bible explains that hell is a place of torment where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, everlasting contempt, and eternal punishment. See. The word of the Lord declares that the soul that sins shall die, and that everyone is appointed once to die and then face judgment. Those who are judged and sent to hell will face what is called the second death after the final judgment, where death and Hades, that is Satan, his angels, and all who are in hell, and all whose names are not found in the book of life, will be thrown into the lake of fire. Revelation 21.8 says, but the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Of all the obvious sins listed here, take note that the unbelieving are included. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8-9, through the Apostle Paul said, he will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. They will be punished with an everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the majesty of His power. Jesus makes it clear that He is the only way to escape the eternal destruction of hell. John chapter 3, verse 36 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life but the wrath of God remains on him. Jesus alone holds the key. He said, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. Jesus knew that the path to eternal life would be difficult due to mankind's sinful nature and the deceptions of Satan. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 through 14, Jesus instructs, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. With the tendency to rely on our own understanding, the opportunities for being led away from Jesus' instructions abound in this world. Immediately following his instruction to enter by the narrow gate, Jesus warns, Beware of false prophets, who come to you in sheep's clothing, 
but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Therefore, Jesus encourages believers to be steadfast in holding to his teachings so that they will always have the godly wisdom to discern truth. Straying from the teachings of Jesus found in the Holy Bible will always produce sinful fruit. Jesus came in grace and truth to die for our sins that we may be empowered by him to live a holy, sanctified life, a life that is submitted to the will of God and obedient to him, a repentant life in which sin is cut out in order to live Christ-like. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus warned, And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 through 27 says, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Having a knowledge of the truth and remaining in it is a matter of life and death. All of this speaks to the paramount importance of the Word of God, the truth that illuminates the way to eternal life and warns of hell to pay for sinful living. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ are to live in this truth, love God wholeheartedly, and love others. We love them by always sharing the truth in order to lead them from death to eternal life and encourage one another in faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. In Luke 16, Jesus tells the story of the rich man and Lazarus. In it, Jesus explains that Abraham tells the rich man in hell that a great chasm has been fixed so that no one can cross from hell to heaven. This signifies the permanence of God's judgment, but the rich man continues with his request out of concern for the family he left behind, saying, Send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them, so that they will not also come to this place of torment. We then come to the main point of the story. Abraham tells the rich man that his family has Moses and the prophets, and that they should listen to them. To this the rich man replies to Abraham, doubling down on his request, saying, But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. Abraham responds to the rich man saying, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if someone rises from the dead. In this life we are given one opportunity to listen to the prophets who testified of Christ and to Christ himself who has risen from the dead. 2 Peter 3.9 says that the Lord does not want anyone to perish but that everyone come to repentance. Therefore, Jesus has given his disciples the Great Commission. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. The word of God has been given to all mankind through Moses, the prophets, and Jesus Christ, who has been risen to eternal glory, so that all may come to repentance and salvation. Jesus has commissioned his disciples to share the truth of the gospel to all ends of the earth. Believers in the Lord Jesus Christ are called to warn the lost and bring them to the love of Jesus. This is the mission for all who have accepted God's gift of salvation through faith in Jesus. We are to echo his cry, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Psalm 145 verse 20 proclaims the promise, the Lord preserves all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy.